Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the uh, Savage Nation. Thank you very much. You can turn the music off. Now, I just wanted to get your attention, those of you who are surfing the channels. Try some old rock and roll to get you to pay attention to your dying nation. With the master matador in the White House getting ready to thrust the sword into the heart of the nation. We have an election. Everyone knows what's at stake in this election. Either it's a continuation of stabbing America in the heart and killing it once and for all. And by that I mean not a nation that will no longer be here, but a nation will no longer be here as you know it. Obama has set out to transform America, and transform it he has. And unless the madman is stopped, it will be impossible to turn back the tide of insanity. He will commit a suicide for this nation along the lines of what is being done to Germany. And that brings us to Blood in the Water by Michael Savage. That's the theme of today's show, Blood in the Water, Purists versus pragmatists. You see, there seems to be a frenzy going on in the media. People are becoming hysterical. They're breaking down. You have the schism created by the very wise Hillary Clinton machine, turning the Cruz people against Trump and the Trump people against Cruz. This is a great job and a great victory for Hillary. They have broken the conservative block in half, pitting Trump against Cruz and Cruz against Trump. Some are foolishly calling for a head-on-head -head debate between Cruz and Trump, which, by the way, violates RNC rules for debates in the primaries. But that doesn't seem to stop self-aggrandizing individuals from demanding that we have a gladiator fest where Trump and Cruz fight each other to the death and the injured party goes on to fight Hillary in the final matchup with half a body. That makes great sense if you're actually working for Hillary Clinton. But the bigger issue is the blood in the water and the frenzy that's going on. The frenzy is based upon the fact that Donald Trump is the new gladiator. Actually, he's the knight in shining armor that America has been waiting for forever. He's the man on the white horse. What the media senses right now is that by Fox turning on Trump, they have put a chink in his armor, so to speak, and that's caused a little bit of blood to come out of Trump. And the sharks are going crazy. They smell blood in the water, and they want that wound opened up. They want to see that knight in shining armor on the ground bleeding to death, vanquished at last by the Democrat, socialist, Islamist media complex. Blood in the water, purists versus pragmatists. The Democrats are laughing because they see the entire Republican Party split in two, with the purists attacking the pragmatists and the pragmatists mocking the purists. Both sides happen to be right. Of course, we would all like a purist candidate to win. However, most every election in the past has been lost on the Republican side by purist candidates who did not appeal to the masses. Or people just sit out the election if the candidates are not pure enough for them. Uh, this is understandable, given what Boehner and McConnell and now Ryan have done to the very voters who put them in power to advance the conservative agenda against the extremist President Obama as he advances toward pure government control over our lives. And then you have the pragmatists on the other side. And I consider myself a pragmatist after seeing what purists have gotten politically, which is near zero. You see, purists have rarely elected anyone, ever, and they will not in 2016. The schism between purists versus pragmatists is equal to the schism even within religions whether it's in the Jewish religion where you have the ultra-Orthodox purists versus the Reform Movement and the conservative Jewish movement, uh, Jewish movement, which are the pragmatists. They're the pragmatists who have modified the religion to appeal to a larger mass of people. There's an adage in biology that I learned in high school which goes like this, adapt or die. Either you want to wind up stuck in amber 
with your purest philosophy, or you want to go on and adapt and evolve. Does this mean that you have to compromise all of your beliefs? No, but it means you have to compromise some of your beliefs. That is true politically, as well as it is with a mate or with a career, adapt or die. Listen to what I just said to you. Adapt or die. That is as true politically as well as it is with a mate or with a career. Adapt or die. There's no room for purists in any sphere of life today. That's a textbook concept. There is a place for purist philosophy, so we know where we come from. But you cannot win a general election in the new America based on a purist philosophy. The reason I back Donald Trump personally, as a pragmatist, even though he may be seen as a social liberal to so many purists, is that on so many issues that are fundamentally important to the survival of America, I trust, and I repeat trust, that he will most likely be able to follow through on providing us with the greatest national security. Issues such as defense, border security, immigration, there's no other candidate that can get the job done. Donald's a deal maker. Even if the purest candidate should win, it would not be gridlock in Congress. It would be the end of Congress. There would be no movement whatsoever. There would be a logjam for the next four years. There would be constant partisan warfare. And during this time of the logjam, should the purest candidate win, ISIS would continue to metastasize into a greater cancer. And tens of millions more immigrants would continue to pour in over the border. We cannot afford this logjam. We cannot afford this gridlock. That is why I, Michael Savage, am a pragmatist. Blood in the water, enter the news dancer. Notice the phrase news dancer, never heard it before? No, you haven't because I created it this morning. We have the news dancer on Fox News who has become center stage. She is reveling in the fact that she has brought the game master who ran the beauty contest to heel. She has done more damage to the Republican Party and the conservative movement than any single other person. In the first debate, she pit all the other candidates against Donald Trump. She was savoring the chance to do it again, putting her career above the issues important to the nation. This is typical, by the way, of all in the media. Everyone wants to be sent to stage in this feeding frenzy. And so I leave you with this thought. Pragmatists versus purists. There is room for both. However, only one can win. Think about what I, Michael Savage, just said. Pragmatists versus purists. There's room for both strains of philosophy, but only one can win. I'm Michael Savage. Well, we have a prediction. It is not breaking news, but I will give you a prediction that I made yesterday on this show, and I'm the only one in the media able to make such predictions with any with a, such a high degree of, uh, uh, let us say, certainty, I'm usually right. Yesterday I said that Trump may be negotiating directly with Murdoch and that he may attend the debate tonight after all. That hasn't been reported, nor do I know if that is true. But my instincts are rarely wrong. And when they are, I tell you they're wrong, or you'll tell me, believe me. I'm going to make a prediction on this show that if I were a betting man, I would bet that Trump will appear tonight on, at, on both stages. That he will appear at the debate at some point, and he will run the fundraiser for the uh, Warriors. Now, yesterday on this show, I more or less said the same thing. Now, what I should do is repeat what I said on January 27th, which was yesterday, of course, where I told you that Trump was probably negotiating directly with Rupert Moloch. And what that means is, he was saying, you know, you want me for the ratings, you want me for the money. Well, let's listen to clip one from yesterday, so you know who you're listening to. Go ahead. Before he boarded a plane for Iowa yesterday, 126, GOP presidential hopeful Donald Trump spoke to Westwood One syndicated talker Michael Savage, who told the Republican frontrunner that he hoped Trump wouldn't show up at tomorrow night's Fox News Channel GOP candidates debate. And shortly thereafter, that's he not said he the wouldn't. Clip. It's that simple. Now, what will happen? He could change his mind. He's a free agent. He's negotiating his appearance, perhaps. Maybe he's negotiating his appearance with Rupert Moloch. And he's telling Moloch, I want to see the questions this time. And if she asks me another one to set me up like I'm the fool, I'm walking off. 
or you're going to put in writing that she won't ask me this question. How's that? And if she does, you lose $40 million per question. Right? I mean, he's negotiating. He's a businessman. He has every right to, to go there and not be set up. So that was what I said yesterday. I said that the news dancer is going to be told to curtsy and control herself and not go, go for the throat. And Trump probably got it in writing that if the news dancer goes for his jugular, a certain dollar amount will be paid to Trump, which is the only way to control the news dancer because it'll come out of her kitty. And uh, that's it. Is that simple? What else can I say to you? I'm an outsider looking in. I don't know anyone. I have no sources. I've survived all these years in radio and as, as a writer simply by analyzing things as best I can using deductive logic. Actually, it's Aristotelian logic to be specific. I was trained in it. I know I sound like a truck driver, which I'm proud of, or an old longshoreman from the 1950s, which I'm proud of. But the fact is, is I have I'm a, a mind that functions very much like an ancient Greek who studied on the, on the Aristotle. If you actually analyze what I say, you'll find out that it's quite precise. There's an elegance to it. I realize that it doesn't meet the protocols of the elders of the media, but there's a certain precision to what I say to you. And so I open the show today giving you blood in the water, purists versus pragmatists, and it's probably the most important analysis of what's going on right now on the Republican side. It'll be up on michaelsavage.com and World Net Daily might link it. That's about it. It should be read around the world. It's the shot that was fired, that was heard around the world, what I just read to you on this show in the opener. I'm telling you how good it is. I know from my own past history as a writer when something's really good, very good, and so good that it's off the charts. Purist versus pragmatist defines exactly the situation we find ourselves in. And it was all set up by the Democrat media machine. They pitted them against each other, and you fell for it. So that's what I'm saying, and then I'm saying that tonight we're probably going to have a shock where he'll be at both places, sort of like the Zelig uh, of politics. Let's give it to him. Let's have a round of applause for a man who knows how to manipulate the public and the media, because that's just what we need in order to win. Moreover, that's what we're going to need in order to win when he's president. How do you think you're going to win over masses of immigrants in this country who will never be deported no matter what you think? I don't care what anyone says. I'm sorry, you want to go into that one? I, I should do that at another time. I'm a man who actually walks the streets, and I'm going to say it again until you finally hear me. I don't sit in the dark room eating McDonald's hamburgers and looking at the Internet as though it's the answer for everything in the world. Okay? I talk to everyone, and that's very few people. I talk to a veterinarian. I talk to a burger flipper. And there are men who are doing some work for me at my house, putting rocks on a, on a, on a breakwater. They're all from Guatemala. They're short. Men made it. They're strong as iron. These guys are five foot one, five foot two. I speak a little Spanish. They're great people. I mean, I talk to them. I say to them, you know, I say to myself, looking at them, these guys, look what they're doing. Look what they're doing from 7 o'clock in the morning. They're carrying 70, 80-pound rocks, putting them on a wall. I can't do it. They can do it. Who's going to do that? You? All of the crew supporters are going to suddenly go and pick up rocks because they're purists? Robert, you think so? You think we're going to get all of the purists from the cruise machine to start picking up the rocks and picking up the hammers and the saws? I, I really don't think so. I really don't think that all of the Republican precincts are going to produce men who are going to carry the rocks around America or build the buildings. I bicycle every day past a number of houses that are being built, five houses. I've watched them go up over the last two years from the time it was just dirt. And I've watched the laborers. It looks like laborers in ancient Egyptian times pouring over these construction sites, building beautiful homes from the ground up for middle-class people to live in, building homes they can't live in, the same as has been in America for a very long time. When the Italian laborers came over, 1890s, 1920 era, they really couldn't afford the houses that they were building for others, but they built them. And then they built some of the most beautiful church edifices in, in, in that you've seen, beautiful stone, mason, stone masonry. And they built the churches for themselves to go to 